Should church musicians get paid? I promise if this subject or this question comes up one more time. Hey, and welcome to Music Space, where we help working musicians just like you learn how to quickly and easily make a living with your craft. So if you're new here to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded to the channel. So look, off top, this subject is a little personal to me because I've been a church musician for over 30 years now. And in the majority of those 30 years, this question has come up time and time again. And to be honest with you, I'm a little sick of it. So I'm gonna take some time to give some insight on this subject, but please forgive me if I go on a bit of a rant here. I've just always found it ironic that nowhere else in church work is this subject or this question even a theme? Like the nursery workers aren't asked to watch kids for free and question on whether or not they should be paid to do so. The lawn care people aren't asked to cut the grass every week for free or question on whether or not they should be doing it for free or not. Nor are the sanitation workers, for example, asked to clean bathrooms and toilets for free or question on whether or not they should be paid. Nor is the pastor's job question on whether or not he or she should be paid or should be working for free. So you gotta ask, why is it that musicians are the people who are singled out with this particular question? Is there a bit of jealousy or something involved in this? Is there something that you have against us? Do you not understand that what we do is work? So let me break down for you how this works. And let me just say before I get into this, the things I'm about to talk about don't necessarily apply to all church musicians. There's a lot of give and take with this stuff. And a lot of these things are across a spectrum, depending on things like the race of the church you go to, whether or not it's predominantly white or black or Hispanic or whatever, or the size of the church or the amount of money that the church brings in or the status of the church and all of those types of things. So again, these things don't necessarily apply to all musicians, but the things I'm about to talk about are typical. So keep that in mind. So first of all, if we get hired at a church that pays its musicians, and that's a really big if because there are a lot of churches out there that don't even pay their musicians. A lot of us are started on what's called this trial basis. And you know what this trial basis basically comes down to? It comes down to basically them paying us less money for a period of time, say like 90 days or so, but also at the same time getting the same amount of work out of us. So basically what they're doing is just protecting themselves. And by the way, this whole trial basis thing really has no objective goals or standards to me. It really just comes down to if they're feeling you or not. So they come to you at the end of the 90 days and say, yeah, let's continue or no, let's not. And that's it. Now, let me ask, when you got hired at your day job, did you get put on a trial basis where you didn't get paid all of your money? I know there's usually a period where you have to wait for your health benefits and things like that to kick in, but you get paid your full salary. And speaking of benefits, like health benefits and such, there is none for us church musicians. Most churches don't provide health insurance or health benefits or anything like that. If we get insurance, we have to pay for it ourselves. And that's that self-employment insurance, which in most cases is substantially more expensive than the insurance you pay for on your job. But most of us don't even get that insurance. Why? Because we can't afford it on a church musician salary that's also being questioned. Oh, in extra work or what you would call overtime on your day job really doesn't exist for us church musicians. Why? Because it's all covered in the pay we get. So if the church decides a year after they've hired you to add an extra service to their lineup, oh, that's already covered in the pay you get. So we want you to be there or we need you to be there. They decide they want to start an extra choir, a children's choir, a male course, chamber singers, an extra praise team. They decide they want to do a workshop, a conference, whatever. It's all covered in the pay you get and you're expected to oblige and be there. And no matter that there is substantially extra time that you have to put in to do these things, extra time that you have to put in for rehearsals and show up there and all of this kind of stuff, um, it's all covered in the pay you already get. Mind you, these things weren't on the table when you agreed to the salary that you agreed to when you first started. But let me ask you, 
Are you expected to show up at your Monday through Friday job, say on Saturday and put in overtime without getting paid for it? Now, I have a lot more to say here, so please hang with me. But before we get to the next thing, if you're getting value out of this video so far, or if you get value out of my videos on this channel, do me a quick favor and hit the subscribe button and the like button on this video. That lets me know that you appreciate this type of content and it lets me know what type of content I should make for you in the future. And what about raises? <laughs> raises, pshaw, you silly rabbit. So there's these words that are commonly and typically told to musicians when they accept a church job that I have just come to despise. And those words are, when we grow, you grow. And what they typically mean by this is when the church gets bigger, starts gaining new members and starts bringing in more money, we'll pay you more. And this is already an issue off top because if they're saying that to you, it probably means that they're trying to give you less money or pay you less money than what you're asking for. But even outside that, these words are the most vague and arbitrary words ever. So like, are you saying that if within the next six months, your church grows an extra hundred members, I'm going to get a raise? Or is it three months in 50 members? Or is it two years in 200 members? We still have no idea at all when or if we're going to get a raise. And if we are gonna get a raise, how much it's gonna be. But it's honestly really even not that big of a deal. Why? Because that whole when we grow, you grow thing never really tends to happen anyway. Either the church takes a really long time to get to this when we grow stage that they talk about whatever it means, or when they do get there, they totally forget about that whole when we grow, you grow part. They totally forget about that. I kid you not, I'm very serious about this. I know musicians right now, today, playing for churches that they started playing for 20 years ago and still making the exact same amount of money they were making when they started. And they not only were promised the whole when we grow, you grow thing, but they're still being promised that. There's no yearly cost of living increase or nothing like that. So gas prices go up, housing prices go up, utilities go up, food goes up, but our salary doesn't. But I gotta ask, do you at your day job get at least a cost of living increase in your salary periodically? And I gotta add that usually in the rare cases that we do get raises, it's usually nothing that substantial and it comes through a lot of red tape. And if all of this isn't enough for you, you can add to this the fact that we are rarely allocated any sort of budget to get the things that we need to do our jobs efficiently and with the excellence that's demanded of us. In a lot of cases, there's not even a budget for improvements. So the drums, if the church has some, still has the same drum heads on them that was on the drum set when the drum set was donated to the church 20, 30 years earlier. Keys and buttons and stuff are missing on the keyboard and keys are broken and paddles not working on the organ. Microphone stands got duct tape and all of that on them just to hold them up. And you know, the mics themselves have been spit in and all of that stuff so much over the years and not clean that they literally have rust on top of them. But we're expected to take all of that and use all of that and operate in excellence. But does your day job have a broken or cracked computer screen that you have to do work on every day? Does the keyboard that you type on, is it missing keys and not working? And I'm willing to bet that the answer to that question is no, but in the rare cases that it may be a yes, if you have that issue and you go report it to say your boss, do they take forever to replace it? Do they have to have a meeting with the company heads before they decide to replace your keyboard on your computer? And keep in mind, if that's true and they have to have a meeting and such, that meeting only happens once a month. So if you're reporting it, say the day after they have their meeting, you gotta wait another 30 days for it. Now, as far as the work itself of a church musician, it's a lot more detail than the people who question whether or not we should get paid actually know. You have to deal with multiple groups of people at a time, and that means attitudes and dealing with people's attitudes. So you have to learn to have, you know, really excellent people skills. You have to be really good at being diplomatic, being fair and things like that. We're expected to do things like train singers. And in a lot of cases, that's trying to take people who literally have had no formal training in singing or music before, or have no interest in, you know, actually learning to sing or worse, have zero talent and raw skills in singing. And yeah, that also includes the tone deaf singers that couldn't hold a note if you put it in a bucket for them. And even some of the more pleasant situations have at best 
largely imbalanced choirs and teams and things like that. Because all of the ladies in the choir or team or whatever want to be or claim to be altos. So here you are with 12 altos and three sopranos and two tenors, one of which is tone deaf. But we're expected to make them sound exactly like the recording and you know, like it sounds on the radio and on the CD during church services. And the expectation is also that we improve on that consistently. And don't forget, all of that is without a pay raise. And outside of this, we have to practice, plan, and prepare music constantly, all from an ever-dissolving CCM music industry and gospel music industry. So a lot of the CCM and gospel music that's been written today is simply either not appropriate for a lot of the church services and the average church services that we do, won't work with the group of singers and band that you have at your church and require you to have a full band and orchestra to be able to pull off successfully. Or you better be able to have some expertise in running software like Ableton Live to run tracks to make all of that stuff work in which you all have to program yourself, by the way. And also, by the way, the church hasn't allocated you a budget to buy, so you probably gotta buy it with your own money. So you're at a church with just keys and drums, for example, and a few singers, it's really difficult to find current music that you can pull off easily for that group of people. So in a lot of these situations, you're doing full-time work with less than half-time pay. Now also, your job probably isn't threatened by another clerk or assistant showing up and taking your job. Generally speaking, at your day job, there are protocols in place that prevent you from getting fired from that job, of course, provided there is no extenuating circumstances in place. Not church musicians though. It is extremely common for things to happen like, you know, a musician that plays for church to show up at that church on Sunday to do his job and some other musician is sitting on his organ bench or his piano bench or plugging into his amp. And all of that with no reason or explanation at all being given to you. And in a lot of cases, it's not the musician that's showing up to take this person's job fault because they weren't told anything either. This very situation has happened to me before. I was the one showing up to take somebody else's position, not even being told that they had somebody there when I got there. Had I known, I would have at least asked, oh, well, you know, what's going on with this other guy? How are we gonna deal with this? Or, you know, whatever the case may be. Had no clue. And again, situations like this are typical for church musicians. So look, there are a lot of musicians like myself and others who take the time to get formally and properly trained in music. We go through years of grade school and college, and in a lot of cases, you know, secondary college and earn degrees and, you know, get all of this training in music that we bring back to the church to enhance the church and enhance the music and what they do at the church. And those of us who are college grads, you know, take out loans just like everybody does to go to college and pay for school. And guess what? Those loans have to be paid back. But despite all of that, we still gotta be questioned on whether or not we should be paid as church musicians. And even if all of the schooling and all of the formal training and all of that kind of stuff weren't the case, there's still a lot of us self-taught musicians who put in a lot of work and a lot of time to, you know, basically get our craft down to become excellent and bring that excellence in what we do to the church. It's not like it's just stupid simple to be able to sit down and play the piano and be able to play it well and be able to, you know, teach a music department and lead a music department at a church or anything like that. If that were the case, everybody would be able to do it. Musicians put in countless hours of practice and study and rehearsing and all of that just to be great at what we do. And again, we bring that greatness and that excellence to the you know places that we play for. And the thing about music and being a musician is that that never stops because you know the music industry and the way music is played and operated and all of that consistently changes. And let me just pause here for a second to address those of you watching this, you know, thinking and saying to yourselves, well, what about the ministry and what about the service? You know, shouldn't ministry and service be free? And you know, if we pay musicians, shouldn't everybody get paid? Well, let me answer that by asking you a question. If it's the case that ministry and service and all of that should be free, shouldn't that principle apply across the board for everybody that does ministry and service? So shouldn't that apply to say your pastor as well? He or she is doing ministry and service, right? Well, if your answer to this question is something like, well, it's different for the pastor or it's different for this person and this person. Well, okay. That means you're making an exception of some sort to your whole ministry and service should be free rule. 
So then the question becomes, on what basis are you making this exception? Is it say the work that's involved in say the pastor's job or somebody else's job? Does it have anything at all to do with their job responsibilities? Well, I just pointed out to you several job responsibilities and all of the things that musicians have to deal with. So again, why is the exception being made for one and not the other? And you know what else? This question sort of assumes that musicians aren't giving of their time and talents elsewhere and being of service elsewhere. There are a lot of musicians like myself who do things like give to charity regularly, who help the needy regularly, give things away to people who need them like up and coming musicians and all of those sorts of things. But here's the bottom line to all of this. To bring into question whether or not a church musician should get paid for what they do, also brings into question his time, his skills, his talent, his willingness, his selflessness, and all of that. And to be frankly honest, it's kind of insulting. And you know what the funny thing is about this? We're told by the same people who are questioning this whole thing that we should just go out and get a real job. That says that you really just don't respect what we do at all. But at the same time, I guarantee you a huge part of the reason why you joined the church that you joined or why you remain there has at least a little something to do with the music department. So it's a little disingenuous, don't you think? And I've barely scratched the surface here with a lot of the things that church musicians have to do and deal with and their job responsibilities and all of that. So stop, just stop talking about this and stop questioning this so much and try to figure out instead how you can be more empathetic and sympathetic and help musicians who play for church. Okay, I'm sorry, I know I went off on a bit of a rant here, but again, this is something that's kind of frustrated me for a while and this question comes up all of the time. But nevertheless, the question is for you. And the question this week is not even a question. I want everyone who is a church musician and watching this video to comment in the comment section of this video and validate what I'm saying here. That is, if you agree and think it's accurate. This will help give people some insight about this whole church musicians being paid thing. And look, even if you disagree with some of the things I said here, let me know in the comments so we can talk about it. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really, really hope that it was helpful for you and provided some insight on this whole subject of whether or not church musicians should be paid. And look, there's a lot of free resources in the description of this video, like contracts that you can use as a musician and even an ebook that shows you how to make more money as a musician and more. So be sure to check those things out in the description and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button on this video. And here are some other videos that you can check out right now.